he says, can you up front me some money? He says, since I'm not going to be there because that him and his wife's tithe and, and uh, Brother Parson needs some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. Everybody got their beer holders and everything? You got your ashtrays and your spit tunes? I'm out. You ever have a nose? Welcome to Concord Baptist Church and Theater. Uh, there's popcorn in the foray. Amen. We can uh, well, pray for his brother Dave. Well, we're going to say, Lord, again, we do thank you for this day. We do thank you for Sunday school class, Lord, and what we learned there. And Father, it's a, a blessing that the uh, study and and all that uh, that you put on uh, Brother Dale's heart, Lord God, uh, to give us on the Sunday morning, Lord. And, and Father, I do pray that you bless him for it, Lord. And Father, uh, again, we do pray if anybody else is coming for the service to start, Lord, that you give them traveling mercies, get them here safe and home, Lord God, to hear the word of God and the preaching of thy word, Lord. And Father, uh, we're looking to hear from you, Lord, from the, from the uh, preaching hour, Lord God, that uh, you got Brother Parsons uh, anointed, Lord, that uh, you got the message for us, Lord, that uh, you'd have him forgive us, Lord, and help us and strengthen us, Lord God, and, and uh, help us uh, keep our minds and our hearts towards you uh, here in these evil and wicked days. And we'll thank you and praise you in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. We do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, evangelist Tim Wheat. <laughs> Come lead us in some music. Aren't you sweet? Uh, okay, good morning again. And if I stand and turn to page 266. One. 261? Okay. Thank you. 261, sorry about that. 261? Yes. 261. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I said that very quietly. I didn't think anybody heard it. <laughs> I didn't get my daily caffeine in. It's 261. <laughs> yep. 261. All right. Now can people hear me? We can hear you. All right. Uh, that's CA. Yeah. Okay, dramatize. Oh. Uh, all right. Is everybody ready?
trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy. yesterday because they've been working pretty hard and uh, took the girls out and so uh, went over checked out the gun show and didn't go in because the traffic was all the way up the road to U-Haul so I did a U-turn. Amen. 
then we went to the food store and then I went to the mall with them <laughs> then over to tractor supply over by Ballantyne and we got over there and the key was missing from the FOD the, the car the beep beep you know but the key part where that's not working was missing Jasmine said it was in there when I gave it to you of course she's always gonna say that no it ain't <clears throat> So I drove all the way back over to the mall. We looked around, it wasn't there. I said, I'm gonna go by Mr. chef store. And she says, oh, I wasn't there, it was in there. I said, okay, so I got the chef store, pulled up to my old parking place. She said, stop, you're gonna run over it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, and saved by the bell. Amen, she had there. to spend three paychecks getting another one. Yeah. Anybody, but I was in belts and we're up, we're cutting through there to get out. And the lady says, you, you got, you want try for our MasterCard? I said, no, ma'am, I already got a card. She goes, no, our new one said, uh, you get 20% discount. Well, as soon as she said that, Jasmine said, I'm going over here a minute. And she went over there and, uh, I said, yeah, go ahead. Cause I've been buying clothes and, so I said, but I don't need nothing. They said, that's right. You can take that 20% coupon and use it anytime. I said, okay. <laughs> Next thing you know, she runs it through. She goes, oh, you got our highest amount. You did good. I said, oh, thank you. She's doing the paperwork and Jasmine walks up with a sweatshirt. She said, dad, can we use that on that? I said, yeah, go ahead. It's a sweatshirt, right? Just like a $45 sweatshirt. <laughs> I will not say yes again until I ask how much. I feel sorry for the guy that marries her. <laughs> Amen. All right. Brother Parson, I know you and your wife coming up. She'll be singing, but uh, I don't have one up here. Do you need a spit tune? Uh, no. Not today. All right. I, I just, I do like those <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's all yours now. <clears throat> I know how you Georgia Mountain boys are. You know, you got that brown stripe dripping down the side of your chin. <laughs> when old Satan comes to tempt you and tries to make you doubt, the Lord is there to take you by the hand. With his loving arms around you, he'll gently lift you out. He will comfort you and give you grace to stand. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. And you'll know him by the nail wounds in his hands. Yeah, yeah. When this world is crumbling round you, uh -huh. and it seems that no one cares, and you feel that there's no use to carry on, just remember Jesus loves you, and he cares for his own. He'll be standing there when all your friends are gone. Yes. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. And you'll know him by the nail wounds in his hand. Amen. 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 I tell you what, in the ministry sometimes it gets down to it's just him. Amen. 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 
Yeah, sure. <coughs> Amen. But he's there. Right. Yeah. He's always there. Well, amen. It's good to be back at Concord again. Amen. Uh, now, in this COVID uh, scare we've got, you know, a lot of churches not having revivals anymore. A lot of churches not even having Sunday services anymore. Amen. 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 Yeah. But I just... Uh, we tried to pray and ask the Lord to lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way he would have for us to go. Amen. And amen. We, we look at the COVID scare, but things can get much, much worse. Amen. amen. And uh, I tell you, if there's ever been a time we need to pray, God gave the world America. You hear me? America has changed the whole world. Amen? Amen. So, we're in a mess today, though. Amen? The communists have come in. You know, we fought the communists, and many men gave their life to defend this nation. And so, they knew they couldn't come and just take us over. So they invaded us from within. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, we have filled up our government with the communists, and we're in a mess. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you know, all of this very well could be the setting up of the coming of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I, I tell you, friend, we're, we're, we're right at the point of a one world government, one world leader, amen? amen? But you know what? The church is not appointed to that wrath that's going to come. And amen. I'm glad amen. that we're not going to be here. Amen. And you know what? We really need to be concerned about more than anything else is getting our loved ones saved. That's right, amen. Because if we don't, they're going to be left behind. Amen? Amen. Instead of being afraid of what Nancy Pelosi is going to do, and who knows what that might be. Look at all she's already done. We really need to be concerned about a lost and dying world. We need to be concerned about our children. You know, most people today, their children made a little profession of faith, but now they're in the world. They never did really live for God and never did really do anything for God. And But we convince ourselves that they're saved. Amen. But I tell you what, we need to find us an altar. And these hard cases is going to come by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. That's right. And that's what we need to be concerned about is uh, getting them before it's too late. Amen. And uh, if you have your Bibles now, we'll read with us. Uh, I'm going to read in a couple of different places. You know, when you get saved by the grace of God, you become a new creature in Christ <laughs> Jesus. Amen. And all things pass away, and behold, all things is going to become new. Amen. 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 But so many people today was just like me as a kid. I made several professions of faith. And uh, I would change for that day maybe, but within a week... I had forgot all about that, and I was going my way and doing my thing, and there was no change. I was just still that little old mean parson boy. And uh, uh, But that Saturday night that I got saved by the grace of God, I had been under conviction for months. And uh, I, I remember that night I had come to the end of myself. And that night I surrendered my life to the Lord. You remember that? You, you remember when 
you really truly gave yourself to the Lord. Amen. And I am so thankful that the Lord called me by his grace. Man. And uh, I, I'm thankful that I really truly got saved by the grace of God because I became that new creature. And I'm thankful that the Lord called me. You know, no man can come to the Father except the Father which have sent me, Jesus said, except the Father which have sent me, draw him. Amen. Amen. And if you wouldn't convict it and draw by the Holy Spirit of God, you never got in. You would just like me, you would... You, you would be religious for a few hours and then you'd be back in the world and doing the same old things that you have done before. But I thank God for that Saturday night, uh, 50, almost 53 years ago, that I knelt on my knees in that old grown up garden. And I told you this before about how that I got saved and God changed my life that night. Amen. It wasn't like before. I There was something, someone on the inside. And when the Holy Spirit of God comes on the inside of you, he changes you. And you become that new creature in Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? And if that didn't happen to you, if you didn't change, then my friend, you never really truly got saved by the grace of God. Amen. 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 In, Amen. in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 17, the Bible said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Amen. I, I thank God. I thank God that my life become a new thing. Amen. He said, all things, listen, all things passed away. And listen, if that old sinful life of yours did not pass away, and you didn't hate sin, and you couldn't stand sin, and you didn't want to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Listen, you never got the real thing. Amen. You just made a little profession of faith that didn't mean anything. But my friend, listen, when you get saved in all things, that old life, the things I used to do, the life that I live, listen, I had new desires in my heart to live for him, amen? And I didn't want to cuss anymore. I didn't want to drink anymore. I didn't want to fight anymore. Listen, I, I wanted to please the Lord, amen? Amen. And listen, it lasted more than a few hours or a few days. Let me tell you, it has lasted for Fit almost 53 years. And listen, I, I'm still a new creature in Christ Jesus. And listen, those old things have not creeped back in like it has for a lot of people. That a lot of people made a decision and, and they cleaned up their life for a few days, but now they're back where they used to be. Amen. 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 He said... He said, old things are passed away. Let me ask you, did the old things really, truly pass away? Amen. In your life? Did, did you stop your drinking and cussing and smoking? And uh, are, are you still the same old person? Lie? Listen. Hey, when you get saved by the grace of God, you can't lie, friend. Are you listening? Because no liar is going to enter in. Amen. I, I, I become that new creature that Saturday night there in that old growed up garden. It's growed up in, in blackberry uh, vines. And I, I thank the Lord that 
that I found the Lord there in that old growed up garden. Amen. Amen. Thanks be unto God. I, I, I tell you, I become that new creature in Christ, not something else, not in religion, but in Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you want to look here in in uh, Second Peter chapter number one, is where I really want to take my text from. But but you know, when I got saved, I began my life began to change that night. And, and you know, I, I tell you, when I would try to study the Word of God, and and I'd run up on something. And it would really excite me when I could look at that scripture and say, hey, look, this is what has happened with me. Amen. Amen. Well, this, these verses that I'm going to look at tonight, I, I want to tell you that these things should have happened to you. Because if you're saved, if you don't have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, you are not saved. Are, are you listening to me? And if the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, He's going to lead you and guide you in the right direction. Amen. 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 We may not all have the same calling, but friend, I'll tell you, there'll be some things that there'll be similarities that the Lord will lead you. Amen. And as we look here in, in uh, 2 Peter chapter number 1, and, and uh, I, I'll begin reading in verse number 5, and we'll just take this as we go. Normally, I have you to stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God, but today we just want to just read it verse by verse and, and see what it has to say. I look at this, and I can compare this to my life when I got saved. I can compare this to the changes. And this is the word of God. And your life ought to line up with these scriptures that I am going to look at here just for a little while this morning. In verse number five, he said, And besides this, give all diligence Add to your faith virtue, and and to virtue knowledge. He said he said here that uh, that to uh, add to your faith. You know we're saved by grace, by the grace, the love of God. We're we're saved by His grace through faith, the faith that He has given unto us. And our faith needs to grow. You know, I, I'm all of my Christian life, I've pretty much lived by faith. Amen. Yes. Been in evangelism, it's chicken one week and feathers the next. Amen. <laughs> but uh, but I, I've lived by faith. And I want to say that the Lord has taken care of me Amen. down through these years. Amen. Amen. It's not always been a bed of roses and and I, I can I can brag about having faith, but you know I'm human, and there's times that our faith is 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 uh, it, it'll waver on us if we're not careful. Amen. I know mine has over the years. I I, I was thinking the other day about how uh, I've looked at my situation, and I'd think, how in the world am I going to make it now? Amen. <laughs> and boy, I, I'd look at it and I'd tell myself I'm living by faith. But I tell you, sometimes my faith would get mighty weak. But you know, in all these years, the Lord has never, ever one time let us down. Amen. 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 Never, ever. Never. And, and listen, we're to let that faith grow. And, and, and the longer I serve him and the longer I live for him, you know, I find out that he is still there. He and, and my faith and my trust is in him. Amen. Yes. I, I can look at my health and I can look at my situation as 
as far as my ability, and boy, I'll tell you, it just don't look good. Amen. But I, I tell you, the Lord, I, I don't think he's going to let me down that I'm old and wore out now. And I don't think he'll let you down either. Amen. He has proved himself all of these years. And I'm glad today that my faith, my faith. Now, now when I first got saved, if you ask me if I really believed that God could and God would, boy, I'd, I'd have given my life. Amen. But there's been some times that my faith wasn't all that strong. Amen. But my faith has grown. Has your faith grown? Have you trusted in him? Have you been led by him? Listen, you're, if the Holy Spirit of God has come into you, he is going to prove to you that God is able to do what he said that he would do. Yes, Amen. Look at your life. You might say, oh, but preacher, look what happened to me. Hey, listen, God's still in control. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. We're living in a sinful mm -hmm. world, friend. We're living in a sinful world, but I'll tell you, no matter what our situation may come, God is able to see us through. God Amen. is able to take care of us. And, and our faith, we should add to our faith virtue. What's virtue? Purity. Amen. <laughs> you know, before I got saved, I wasn't worried about being pure. It was you. I, you know, you might have been taught and, uh, and tried to live by it. But uh, I want to say that most people, that old sinful nature is there. Amen. That old lust of our flesh, it's there. But, but when I got saved, my life changed. I, I had a new desire. Not for the pleasures of this world, but I had a desire to please him, to live holy, to live right. Did you, when you got saved, did that desire come on the inside of you and change your life? Listen, friend, if it didn't, you did not become that new creature in Christ Jesus. And you didn't get saved. The Bible said on that day, talking about the day that man's going to stand before God and give an account for their life, friend, let me tell you, let me tell you, if, if you did not have this desire and it stay in your heart all of these years, if you can commit adultery and fornication, friend, and go on and it not bother you, listen, you missed the mark. Because them old things didn't pass away. Amen. We still got we still got a sinful nature, but I'll tell you, we've got the Holy Spirit on the inside, and he that's within us is greater than he that's in the world. Amen. 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 And, and listen, God, God gave us directions by this book right here. Are you listening to me? God help us today. Virtue. You know, I, I, I know we're still in this sinful flesh and we don't always do everything that we should. And I know that bad thoughts can enter into people's mind. But I'll tell you, there ought to be a desire in your heart if you're really truly say you are to want to do right to be right Amen. to be what god would have for you to be you are to want to be pure before god amen, amen. i tell you when i that saturday night i got saved i tell you my desires my heart changed i had desires like i'd never had before i didn't have the desires of the world because those old things had passed away. And listen, the things become new in my life. Amen. Amen. I become a new creature. Amen. 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 I was raised around cussing all my life. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I, I, but when I got saved, you know, my cussing stopped. 
Amen. I, I used to, I, I used to do plumbing and electrical work, and I was getting into the industrial part of it when God led me out full time for the Lord. And uh, fella, I used to. He he tried to keep me there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, he always had so he had three big plants and and uh, and his his general plant manager that was over all the plants, over everything. He would come all the time and just get right beside of me. He cussed all the time. And I'd tell him, I'd say, Ralph, why don't you go play in the traffic? I don't want to hear all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, he, 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 he was over there one day, and uh, I, I, was, I, I was trying to put something together. I don't remember. And I was trying to concentrate on that and listen to him. And he said a little word that a lot of people don't consider it cussing, but it ain't nice. Let's put it that way. And, and I, I said, yeah, Ralph, what? What do you, uh, whatever the word was, I said it. And when I did, it convicted my heart. Right there and then, I fell on my knees and started praying, asking God to forgive me. You can hear me all over that plant crying, begging God to forgive me. <laughs> when I got through, old Ralph it looked like he'd been run over by a truck. <laughs> and, uh, he was embarrassed and he, he, he kept apologizing and kept apologizing, just kept apologizing. Amen. But you know what? My language changed. I Amen. wanted to be right. I, I wanted I wanted to be clean. Didn't you? Amen. When I got saved, I, I I didn't want nobody to think I was a big tough bad person. I tell you what, and if you really truly got saved. I believe you wanted to be clean on the inside, and I, I, I believe you want to be virtuous and pure. And I, I'll tell you something else when I got saved. You know what I wanted? I wanted to learn the Word of God. Amen. Now, I'd looked at it a few times, but nothing serious. But since that Saturday night, I have wanted to learn what the Word of God says. I have wanted to hide His Word in my heart that I, I'd, I, I would know how to live myself and I would know how to teach others. I, I, I was in love with the Word of God. Amen. That was a new part of me was the Word of God. I could read it and things I didn't understand and I'd look at it and... and uh, but you know what? You know what? I wanted the Word of God in my heart. Amen. And just so happened, I, I worked around a bunch of old boys. Man, I tell you, they were Pentecostal, and all they'd ever done all their life is argue about the Word of God. And, and you know what? I didn't know anything about the Bible. And uh, they'd come up and say, well, what do you think about so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, I'd say, I don't know. And they'd say, well, the Word of God says this, but only they twisted around. And uh, they'd say, well, what do you Baptists believe? And, boy, they kept me confused for the longest. <laughs> I, I'd, uh, I, I'd try to study and figure it out. I'd call people and try to figure it out and, and find out. And... Uh, when I'd learned something, they was helping me, really. They, did, they didn't think so. But when, when I would find out the answer and I'd get it settled in my heart, I'd take it, I'd stick it under their nose and I'd, I'd argue with them, amen? I wouldn't go let them get the best of me. they just a bunch of heathens anyway, amen? But you know what? Them old boys, every time I'd show up some, they'd turn right around, they'd leave that alone, and they had something else. Hey, <laughs> and then they'd get after me on that. But you know, really, it helped me. It yeah. helped me. It helped me to study. Are you listening? And, and I love the Word of God. And, and you know, when I, I learned something, boy, 
I'd get excited about it because I wanted to know the word of God. Did you want to know the word of God? Did you have a desire? Listen, there are eight things here that I want to look at this morning. And these eight things, you know what the number eight is in the word of God? The number eight in the word of God is new beginnings. Amen. And I become a new creature and I didn't even realize here in the word of God that this was in there. But I'm glad that I can look back. And after all of these years, that work that God started in my heart is still there. It's still dear to me. I still love the word of God. Amen. Amen. I love it, don't you? Amen. I'm talking about the word of God. Amen. A lot of people holler their King James and they they love the King James Bible, but they sure don't practice it. Amen. Amen. They say they believe it, but it, it's not in their heart. Amen. Knowledge. Amen. I wanted to know. Do you, don't you want to know the word of God? Amen. And then number four is temperance. Amen. You know, I, I got a I got a friend, he's pastoring in Virginia now, but he pastored in West Virginia for years. And that's where he was from, is West Virginia. And he uh he makes knives and he's made me several knives over the years and I'd go preach for him. And uh, he he could he 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 didn't go buy steel in. Well, he'd pick up old pieces of metal, and some of it wouldn't worth nothing. But he would take that and he would he'd temper it. He'd put it in the fire and then stick it in the water, and he would temper that. And he knew exactly how to get that so he could make them knives and they'd be sharp and they'd stay sharp and they wouldn't get dull every time you cut something. And, and, and you know, the, I found out that that's what God has done for me. God has put <laughs> me in the fire and then he'd cool me off, amen. And, and he tempered me in my life so that I could be able to do what God wanted me to do. Amen. Amen. Has God worked in your life? Has God put you in the fire so that you could be the soldier that he would have for you to be? Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. There have been some things that I've looked at in my life and I'd say, boy, why in the world has this come up in my life? Why am I facing what I'm facing? There, there could be no good whatsoever in this in my life. There's no way that this could be good. But you know, God took it and used it for good. God took it and broke me and tempered me and got me to the place to where he could use me. Amen. 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 A lot of people, every time some little something happens, buddy, I, I mean, they're ready to give up. They're ready to quit. Amen. And I'm not saying, and I'm not belittling your heart being broken. I'm not belittling the, uh, the hard times we have. <clears throat> but, you know, God uses those to make us what he would have for us to be. Amen. Amen. Sometimes things that we do, God will God let us suffer from them. Amen. Hello? Amen. Hello? But listen, it changed me for the good. You know, the hardest battles that I faced in my Christian life, they have helped me more than what I thought was the good time. That's right. Amen. 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 They have tempered me. They have they have sharpened my life so that I could be used of the Lord. Amen. And listen, these these are the things that God through the Holy Spirit works in our lives to make us 
what he would have for us to be. And, and we just didn't jump up and run, did we? Amen. I know people that's quit on God and then quit on God and then quit on God and then quit on God. But you know what? I can truthfully say, by the grace of God, I ain't never quit. Amen. Hey, man. I hear people talk about quitting all the time. I've heard preachers say, I quit every Monday morning. Listen, I, I tell you, I did not deserve to be saved. Amen. And, and and I am not going by the grace of God. I'm not going to stand up and talk about quitting and talk about uh, uh, all the hard times I had and accuse God. Listen, I have never accused God. If there's something wrong in my life, it's me. That's right. Amen. And if there's something wrong in your life, it is you. Amen. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, friend, the God that you and I serve and live for is a perfect God, and he'll always do right. If anything has been done wrong, it's been done by you or somebody else, not the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I tell you, God, God to take you through some places. But it's all for your good. It's all for his glory and his honor. Did these things happen to you when you got saved? Did they really? And patience. You know, when I first got saved, God called me to preach. When I got saved, he, he called me to preach. I know some folks, and uh, I, I don't understand him calling me because I didn't know anything. But God talked, and, uh, and he, he used me to preach. And boy, I tell you, every time I preached, I thought I'd done a wonderful job, baby. <laughs> yeah. first, time, first time I preached, I stood up there about 15 minutes, and I cried 20 of that. Just stood <laughs> and, and boy, I, I thought I had arrived. And, and, and uh, I'd go somewhere and preach, and, and I'd think, Boy, I tell you, God's going to really use me now. Because back then, you know, wasn't that unusual to go preach on Sunday and see three or four people saved? I mean, just the way it was. Because the power of God was moving in the churches. And uh, we, uh, uh, let's see, I've lost my train of thought now. Amen. That's what happens when you get old. Amen. You thought you were something. Yeah, I thought I was something. Amen. So God just. Show me I'm still nothing. <laughs> still nothing. But I, I I thank God that that the Lord He He would take me and He would do this so that He could get me that I wouldn't be filled with pride. You know, I see so many preachers today that are filled with pride. And, and uh God will do these things to break us, to get us to the point. Hey, man. Hey, listen. I think, boy, I've arrived now. God's going to use me. And then he'd set me on the shelf for maybe a month, not get to preach anywhere. But you know, God done that for my benefit. Hey, man. You know what? If God loves you and if God is using you, he has to break you and teach you some things to start with. That's right. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Yes, sir. Are, are you yeah. listening to me? Yeah. He's going to teach you some things. Hey, man. Yeah. Amen. You know, he had to get Billy Parson out of the way before he could use this old boy. Amen. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Patience. Do you have any patience? Hey, man. I've been taught a few patients down through these years. Amen. But God has proved to me who he is and that he is able, that he has been good to us. Amen. Uh, was you changed? Was you changed? 
hey, I, I, I go to churches and, and I'll see old Joe over here at this church and I'll go over here to another church and he's their member and, and he goes somewhere else and he's their member. Maybe go to another state and there he is. Amen. Just <laughs> go from here to yonder. If God puts you here, he puts you here for a purpose. And circumstances, listen, circumstances does not control the will of God for your life. Amen. 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 I, I'll tell you what, nowadays you're not going to find a perfect church. Amen. You're not going to find a church with perfect people in it. I resent it. it uh, well, all except you, brother. Amen. Amen. Just joking. Hey, listen. Listen. God help us. And then God wants us to add to patience what godliness. Amen. You know, I, I, I've heard people say, well, you know, these people, they'll wear a sign that says I'm a Christian and and God on it to try to impress people. Well, what's wrong with that? I want everybody to know I'm a Christian. Hey, man. I, I, hey, listen. I wouldn't mind wearing a big old sign saying, I love Jesus. I'm glad I'm a Christian. Because I am. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, man. I want to live right. I, I want, you know, used to Christians. Not everybody dressed right. Yes, sir. Amen. Now you come into the church, and really, it, it's a disgrace. Amen. Women come into the church, look like they got on pantyhose is all they got on. <laughs> Leotards or whatever you call them. Amen. And, and, and listen, you're not, you're not kidding me. You do that so people will look at you and lust after you. That's the reason you do that. Amen. 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 Used to, when I first got saved, that would be embarrassing to people. But it doesn't embarrass them anymore. Amen. I, I tell you what, I want the world to know that I'm a Christian. Amen. 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 I, I want to live a clean life. I, I, I want to be the kind of Christian that if somebody needs help, that they'll call on me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. If they want somebody to pray for them, I want them to know that they can depend on me. Don't you? Amen. Hey. Amen. Did you, did these eight desires happen in your life when you got saved? Are you a new creature? Amen. Are you? Are you a new creature in Christ Jesus? Amen. And then brotherly kindness. You know, Churches is filled up with mean people. I mean, actually mean, hateful people. I see it everywhere I go. I can hear their best God attitude. <laughs> huh? Huh? And, and then you, you got you got these people that wants to have little buddy parties, you know. And they're not going to have nothing to do with nobody. Else. You know what? Every church I've ever belonged to or ever been in, I've tried to befriend everybody. Amen. 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 I don't want to be like everybody, but I, I want to befriend everybody. Don't you? I, I believe, I believe that that change that happens in your life when you become that new creature, I don't think you're going to want to hurt people, but you're going to want to help people. Amen. Amen. Tell them. Do you? 
Is there some people you just can't stand? There's people I don't like their ways. But listen, I love them. Don't you? Don't you? Matter of fact, just to be honest with you, the underdog, I, I, I go out of my way to befriend the underdog. Amen. Yes, sir. I really do. And, and I, I believe that if you've got the spirit of Christ on the inside of you, I believe that that's what he gave you too. Here is the pattern. Here is the pattern that God put here for us that we should be. Hey, man, this, this new creature, he explains right here what this new creature business is all about. Hello? Hey, there's people that I don't agree with their life. Amen. But I still love them. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. And if you're what you ought to be, then you will too. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Hey, you, you might turn your nose up at somebody because they may not have what you got. Amen. But let me tell you. Old house we was raised in was right at the edge of town. Of course, I, I thought we had everything. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and you know, Christmas just passed. We didn't have no money to buy Christmas. We, we put up an old sock. We'd make sure it was washed first. <laughs> and hang it on the mantle. Hey, man. And we'd always get an apple, an orange and some uh, uh, always get uh, uh, peppermint candy. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and, and those little old chocolate, there's white on the inside, the chocolate drops. I don't know, can't remember what you call them. Always got a couple of them. That's about it. <laughs> Amen. Didn't get no toys. Amen. But I thought we was rich. Uh, are you listening? Uh -huh. But you know what? When I, I see people that don't have no whole lot, I I, I I try to be especially friendly to them. Yes, sir. Amen. Listen, you're just a sinner saved by the grace of God. Yes, sir. And if it if it wouldn't for the grace of God, let me tell you, no telling where you'd be today. That's right. Amen. 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 Are you listening to me? Brotherly kindness. Amen. Brotherly kindness. And then number eight is charity. Charity is giving love. Amen. Giving love. Amen. You know, I've lived most of my life on the receiving end. God never gave me like he gave some people that can really give. And, and I love to give. Yes, sir. I love to give. You know, when you give from the heart, you know how it makes you feel good on the inside? I like that feeling. I, I like to be able to help people. Hey, don't you? I like to be able to help God's work and, and not to give till it hurts, but to give till it feels good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and when I got saved, I had this desire to help other people. Amen. Hey, God put that there. God put that there. But you know what? Probably one of the most annoying, or not annoying, but uh, overlooked, let's say, ignored gifts here is giving. Amen. We've all got that old sinful 
selfish nature, don't we? Amen. But to be able, to be able to help others. Amen. Have that good feeling on the inside. Are you listening? This is the pattern of a Christian right here. This, this is the pattern. This is what God, when the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're none of his. You need not right. to expect to have this pattern. But that new creature is this pattern right here. Amen? And, and, and if you never did get this pattern, then listen, you missed the mark. And I, I'm not saying, I know some people are better in certain areas than they are in others. But the closer you walk to God, this pattern is going to be revealed in your life. Are you listening to me? It's going to be, it's going to be made manifest. Hey, what kind of a pattern are you? What kind of a creature are you anyway? Huh? I met some Leo, scary creatures in the church in my day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, listen. I, I'm, I, I'm so glad that the Lord Jesus reached down. After all those professions of faith that I've made, you know, he reached down in my life Pick this old boy up. Everybody said he'll never amount to nothing. <clears throat> but let me tell you, God changed my life. Yes, sir. He made a not an old creature, but he made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh. Them old things. Did the old things <laughs> pass away? Did that old sinful life leave you? Did a new life move on the inside with the Holy Spirit of God? Did it? Did it? I tell you what, he said on that day, there'll be many, many, not a few. Many is going to try to convince the Lord that they're saved. Can you imagine? Trying to straighten out God and say, hey, listen, God, you know, you made a mistake. Huh? No. No. I tell you, if you didn't become a new creature, you missed the mark. Amen. 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 A lot of religious people today has missed the mark. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad that Jesus changed me from what I used to be. Amen. Amen. The life that I lived. Amen. Although if you'd asked me, I was a pretty good fella. Amen. But listen, <clears throat> you need to examine your heart. You need to examine your life. You need to know for sure. Because I'll tell you, we're living in the last days. All around us, the thing that's going on is pointing towards the return of the Lord. First of all, we need to make sure that we're saved by the grace of God. That we have been made that new creature in Christ Jesus. And then, secondly, we need to try to get our loved ones in. With everything that we've got, these hard cases come by nothing except by prayer and fasting. Are you listening? I tell you, we need to get down to business. Hey, there's more to being a Christian than coming to the house of God. Amen. 
Hello? Do you know that you know that you know that you're saved? Do you know that for sure? Have you become this new creature? Or are you still that old creature? Uh, I tell you what, today would be a good day to settle it once and for all, mm -hmm. to settle, to know that God did change your life. You you done more than join the church. Right. You done more than getting a Christian job. Amen. Amen. While we stand to our feet. Let's all stand our feet. Why don't you just bow your head right now and examine your heart. Are you really truly saved by the grace of God? Are you? Do you know for sure that if the Lord were to come today that you'd go with him, do you? Do you know that beyond any shadow of a doubt? Does your life line up with this book? With the things that happens in a Christian's life, the changes, being the new creature Do you line up with it? Amen. You know, if I'd had somebody to take the word of God, when I come to the altar to pray, if I'd had somebody to explain to me what salvation really was, it's more than just going to heaven. That's all I was trying to do was go to heaven. But when I become that new creature, when I give my life to the Lord, when I changed, listen, when I changed that night, it changed me for good. Amen. Did it you? Did it examine your heart? Make sure, make sure that you're what you claim to be. Uh, check your heart. I'd love to see the hands of everybody that raise your hand and say, Preacher. There's not a doubt in my mind. I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven when I leave this walk of life. If you could raise your hand, say, I know this beyond any shadow of a doubt. There's hands that could not be lifted. Listen. All this life is is just a prepared place to where we're going to spend eternity. Either you're going to spend eternity in an everlasting lake of fire being tormented because you chose to follow the devil or you can follow the Lord and be in heaven with him throughout the eternal ages. I wonder how many here just raise your hand and say, pray for me, preacher. I, I, want, I, I want everybody here, pray for me. Yes, yes. wonder how many raise your hand and say, preacher, I need to be saved. Preacher, I need to be saved. 
an afflicted hand. Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? Young lady, why don't you step out? Come down here and kneel at this bench and let us spend eternity with you in heaven. Why don't you come right now? I'll tell you, living the Christian life is better than living the life of sin anyway. Amen. The devil will lie to you. He did me. But you can come and give your heart and life to him right now and spend eternity with us that are saved. Why don't you come on right now? Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Is there anybody else? Just say, pray for me, preacher. I need to be saved. Anybody else? Anybody? You might have been like me. You might have made different professions of faith. But your life has never lined up with the book. What about it? What about it? Son, how about coming and getting a song? Lead us in a song. Come on. Just as I am. Who's going to play the piano? Amen. What's your number? 249. 249. While we, while we sing. Play that one. Just sing it. Just sing it without the music, okay? All right. Some of you. Solemn message, God dealing with somebody. Amen. And uh, don't let it slip away. If God's dealing with you, don't let it slip away because he don't have to ask you again. Amen. And uh, I was thinking about what Brother Parson was saying when I first read this in my Bible. He says, in verse 3, according as the divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? 
he says, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Be a partaker of the divine nature. How do you become a partaker of the divine nature? By the knowledge of the word of God and obeying it. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to grow. Amen. I was thinking about what Brother Parts said when I first got saved. The first people that hit me were the Pentecostals. Telling me all about, you know, how the women flop in the floor and everybody speaks in tongues, you know. But I, I, I noticed when I did see something like that, that the women, they fall out on the floor and they go, they have to cover themselves, you know. But what they don't understand is the Bible says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, if any what? By it. Man, speaking an unknown tongue, let it be by two, three at the most, and that by course, and let one interpret. So it was one at a time, had to be men, and one had to interpret. There had to be at least two, no more than three. You don't see that in the Pentecost church today. You see a bunch of people falling out and people running around trying to throw a blanket over them because their skirt came up or something. Or they'll be laying there, you know, and they They'll one eye a cock open, they'll put it down. And they said there was this missionary from Africa. He's an African missionary himself, African, that he came over and sat in one of their service. And they started speaking in tongues, and he got up and ran out. He said they were blaspheming God in his language. Amen. But we don't have to worry about that because he said, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Right. We've got the perfect word of God. That's another false religion. Amen. That's out there. And then, then came along the Jehovah's Witnesses. All right. We were Baptists once. Yeah. Well. Then the next ones that came along, the morons. All right. And, and the Mormons, when we learned about the Melchizedek priesthood, because see that they're big on that. They got it distorted, but they're big on it. And uh, I mentioned that one day at the tent down here. You were here then when we set the tent up, wasn't it, brother? When those Mormons came in, three of them. I thought I'd been there, but I wasn't present on that. Yeah, and we got to talking to them and. Dealing with them, and when I mentioned the Melchizedek priesthood, man, they got all nervous. They got out and never been back. Amen. Because most Baptists don't know anything about what the Bible says. They like do like you said. They come to church and they go home, figure I did my dues. Amen. Then, uh, then I had some of these offshoots come around. Then Buddhism, and then we had them, you know. I'm going to climb up on a mountain on my knees to get to this big green covered copper statue so I could rub his belly. I just grew my own. Mm. Amen. <laughs> rub my own belly. But they'll, they'll, you get saved and they one after another come at you. Yeah. Amen. Try to get you off course. But thank God he's faithful. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. And then you know what else? When I first got saved... There were things that I liked to do that all of a sudden I didn't like to do anymore. And there were things that I didn't like to do that I began to like to do. We'd drive to Spartanburg or uh, up to Concord, North Carolina, just to hear somebody preach. Amen. Because we wanted to hear. We wanted to hear the word of God. We were at meetings all the time. Yeah. The Lord changes something inside you. But I tell you what. If you get out of this book and you get cold on God, your testimony will definitely change too for the worse. Amen. Amen. I've been on both sides of it. Amen. And uh, I like what Pastor Randall used to say. <clears throat> you know, this is how we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. I don't have to like you, but I got to love you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to all the meetings we used to go to? They quit 
quit having them or we quit going to them? Basically, now they have. There's still a few. They still have some of them camp meetings up at Greer and different places. But uh, uh, I don't think they've had the Low Country Fellowship since all this stuff started. But uh, anyway. All right. Well, appreciate the message there, Brother Parson. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Dave, if you would ask the Lord to bless an offering and We'll take an offering up so we can get him out of town. That way you won't be convicted. Hey, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> my Lord, my God, my Savior, Lord. Again, we do thank you for this day. We do thank you for what we heard today, Lord God, and a sobering message, Lord God. To, to, like Brother Parson said, uh, something we need to examine our hearts for it, Lord. And Father, see if we're in the faith, Lord. And, Father, we do uh, thank you for Brother Parsons and his and his wife for their their commitment and their loyalty to to the gospel, Lord. And they've been faithful, Lord God. And Father, I do pray, Lord God, that your Father that uh, put on the people's heart to, to give just a little bit of something to, to help and encourage Brother Parsons and his wife on, Lord, and uh, keep gas in the car so they can go to the next spot to, to preach, Lord. And Father, to like I said, encourage them and keep them going. And we'll thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 $400, Brother uh, Tommy, if you would, thank the Lord for the offer. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for love and kindness and mercy. Just thank you again for the message today, Brother Parsons, that you gave Brother Parsons for us to hear today. Just pray and we'll examine ourselves today, Lord. We'll thank this offer, Lord, and bless it as you bless it, Lord, Brother Parsons. And I'm just praying keep him holy. Keep us strong in the faith. We'll be sure to give you all the praise, the honor, the Lord. Oh, first name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in this time. Amen. How long have we been meeting? About 1990? I think that old tramp, Travis, brought you around, didn't he? I think I met you. Or at the camp. Yeah, at the camp. Amen. I've been coming to what, 30-something years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Lord said he wouldn't put more on us than we could bear. Amen. 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 Still, my kids used to sing that song. He's still working on me. You can sing it. <laughs> Amen. Did you uh, bless the food? I didn't. No? All right. Brother Dave, there's another one for you. Bless the food. Close it out, Amen. sir. Amen. It's been a good day in the house of the Lord, Lord God. And Father, uh, I believe you was uh, amongst us today, Lord. Yeah, amen. Father, we, we thank you and praise you for that, Lord God. And Father, I do pray, Lord God, that uh, you bless the fellowship. <clears throat> Father, that you bless the food, Lord God. And 
Father, we thank you for all the people that, that uh, labored and, and gave to us so we could all could eat, Lord God. And Father, I do pray that, uh, again, that you bless the food, Lord God, and, and bless our bodies to uh, be strengthened, Lord God, to, to keep in the gospel, stay on our knees and in our Bibles. And we thank you and praise you. In the Lord Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.